I'm Zvan Mirkreja. I'm a clinical professor of cardiology at Baylor College of Medicine and the interventional cardiologist uh, at St. Luke's Medical Center and Texas Heart Institute. I'm also chief editor of Texas Heart Institute the Journal and immediate past president of International Society of Endovascular Specialists. The topic of today's presentation is coarctation and its management. These are best handled with endovascular therapy. Here are my disclosures. None of them are pertinent to the presentation that I'm going to give now. Now, as far as coarctation is concerned and indications and treatment options, the indications uh, for treatment either surgically or endovascularly are decreasing the lumen diameter of more than 50% of the aortic uh, lumen and pressure gradient of more than 20 millimeters of mercury above and below the coarctation. There are numerous treatment options available as far as surgery is concerned, including patch repair, subclavian flap, end-to-end -end anastomosis, and bypass. As far as endovascular approaches are concerned, balloon angioplasty was the first one to be introduced, followed by placement of various type of stents, and then more recently, the use of stent grafts. Now, in spite of good outcomes uh, with surgical treatment of coarctations in great majority of patients, there are late complications after surgical treatment of coarctation that are listed here. Aneurysms have been frequently reported after patch repair and also subclavian flap, as well as to end-to-end -end anastomosis and bypasses. The overall aneurysm and pseudoaneurysm incidence is uh, somewhere in the range of 10% after surgical repair. It is somewhat more common after subclavian flap repair of 17% uh, and the Dacron patch repair, which ranges in the literature between five to 38% and tube graft repair at 6%. But the overall aneurysm rupture rate, which is of great concern, has been reported to occur in about 7% of patients. So what are the advantages of endovascular approaches to a uh, uh, treatment of uh, coarctation. Number one, uh, the endovascular technique is less invasive. It offers less complications. It offers early recovery with excellent procedural and long-term results. It can be uh, used in the form of PTA balloon or Palma's XL stents that are listed here or stent grafts such as ICAST or other ones that have been recently approved for this indication. We can see the images of all those technologies that have been used uh, for treatment of coarctation using endovascular approach. So what are the procedural results and acute complications in stenting of native and recurrent coarctation of the aorta in patients over four years of age? And here is this uh, multi-institutional uh, study that I would like to share with you. It is a retrospective review of a study carried on in 17 institutions from 1989 to 2005 in 565 procedures in 555 patients. The median age range was 15 years. 52% had a native coarctation and 40% had recurrent surgical coarctation and recurrent intervention was reported in 7% of patients. Interestingly enough, the procedural success rate was close to 98%. The aortic wall complications such as dissection or pseudoaneurysm was reported in 3.9% of patients. Now we can see uh, the literature review related to endovascular coarctation repair from various centers and various studies. And we can see that various type of uh, devices have been used from a Palma stent to a newer generation, uh, either balloon expandable or self expandable stent. And the follow up ranged here between 18 months to 60 months. And the age also ranged between 19 years to 46 years. What's also interesting is the technical success rate was very high in most of the studies, close to 
And we can see as far as pressure gradients from pre-op to a post-op is concerned, we can see a dramatic reduction in the pressure gradients, typically from 50 uh, millimeters of mercury or higher to uh, uh, the range of six to 16 millimeters of mercury after completion of the procedure. I would like to share with you a few of the examples uh, in patients that underwent endovascular intervention for complex uh, uh, procedures uh, uh, with coarctation. Here is one patient, 34 years of age, uh, with exertional shortness of breath and malignant hypertension. And as we can see, elevated blood pressure in both arms. Uh, this patient had a super tight coarctation that is shown in the middle panel with a blue arrow. And on the right-hand side, we can see the IVUS image that shows a severe narrowing with a luminal diameter roughly of uh, four to five uh, millimeters. This procedure was performed via percutaneous approach under local anesthesia with such immediate closure device in a pre-closed fashion with a long sheath. There was a severe gradient of 80 millimeters of mercury across the coarctation. In the left-hand panel, we can see the indentation of the balloon uh, during the dilatation. This balloon was 15 by 40 millimeters, uh, uh, non-compliant balloon. And then we can see uh, post uh, uh, 4010 Palmas Excel stand placement, a uh, beautiful result without any evidence of a complication and alleviation or uh, relief of the gradient from 80 millimeters of mercury to zero millimeters of mercury at the completion of the procedure. We can also see at the uh, follow-up um, at two years, excellent result on the CTA with 3D reconstruction of uh, this uh, particular intervention. Here's another patient, 32 year old with chest pain and decreased exercise uh, capacity that underwent PDA and coarctation repair at the age of three and a half months with a Dacron graft. We can see here on CT uh, pseudoaneurysm formation and calcification in the pseudoaneurysm with super tight uh, coarctation. Uh, we can see uh, in this particular scenario, uh, after balloon angioplasty and placement of the stent graft that measured 24 millimeters in diameter, uh, and 116 millimeters uh, in length, excellent results and alleviation of the gradient. We prefer in patients with uh, pseudoaneurysm to use the stent grafts rather than plain old uh, balloons or uh, uh, bare metal stents to prevent uh, rupture and serious complications. Here is another patient of ours that had uh, also as a child uh, tube graft placement uh, for treatment of quartation, the patient developed pseudoaneurysm, and this was uh, treated with a combination of uh, different type of stem grafts to resolve this problem and placement of the endovascular coils. And we can see a long-term follow-up at uh, 12 year follow-up, excellent result uh, without any evidence of endoleak or any other complications. We reviewed at our institution, uh, our experiences uh, with uh, treatment of coarctation either with um, surgical approach or endovascular approach. And we can see that 943 patients are included in this particular study. And uh, we can see that um, uh, the complication such as aneurysm occurred in 5.8% uh, of patients. We can see that uh, coarctation or residual coarctation was present or recoarctation in 40% of those patients. And then we can see that the surgery was performed roughly in 80% of patients and in about 21% of patients, uh, endovascular approach was selected. We can see that 30-day uh, mortality was 1.9% with surgery, but there were neurological events in 5.7% of patients, including a paraparesis in uh, almost 2% of patients, respiratory problems, need for tracheostomy, acute renal insufficiency, vocal cord paralysis in 21% of patients, and also reoperation re -operation for bleeding. Now, when we compare this uh, in 11 patients that underwent endovascular repair with various type of stent grafts, we can see that there was a zero 
morbidity, zero mortality, and zero need for reintervention. So, what are the advantages of endovascular treatment of coarctation? Majority of patients can be treated with good results. This particular approach avoids extensive thoracic surgery and other aggressive measures inherent with surgery. Recoarctation, aneurysms, and pseudoaneurysms post surgery can be successfully treated with various commercially available stent grafts. In our personal experience, local anesthesia, percutaneous approach, uh, outpatient procedure offers lower cost and offers good long-term outcomes. Balloon expandable stents or stent grafts are preferable techniques to plain all balloon angioplasty. And redo interventions are possible at low risk and good long-term results. Thank you very much for your attention.